It's been six years since Newcastle United faced Sunderland after six defeats in a row. That particular game ended in a one all draw with Mitrovic getting a late header. Today that temporary truce ends here at the Swan Hunter Recreation Ground where Newcastle United last legs uh, walking football team play Sunderland walking football team. Now you might think that walking football is a bit slow and boring, it's anything but. And these two teams I can guarantee are going to be in a nail biting match, both fighting for the Morrisings Cup, so anything could happen. And this match has been organised to raise awareness for mental health, but also to show that although it's good to talk, it's even better to get into exercise. So anyway, let's see what happens in this match. It's coming up. Unfortunately, the UK is experiencing a mental health crisis, especially with men, and suicides are on the rise. Did you know one in four people at any, at any point in their life will suffer from depression or anxiety? Think about that at a home game at St James's Park with 52,000 fans in there. 13,000 of them at any one time will be suffering from a mental health issue. And although the solutions to cure and depression and anxiety are really complex, there's no denying that eating a healthy diet Getting more exercise, moderating your alcohol and getting a decent night's sleep is going to make you feel a whole lot better. Anyway, the teams are now getting ready for this big crunch match. And I'm going to interview the manager of Newcastle United Last Legs, that's Dave Noble. So for viewers who um, either haven't heard of walking football or have some preconceived ideas about what it is, what exactly is it? Well, it's basically just a version of six-a-side football played at a slower pace designed for older players. It's primarily aimed at the over 50s. Basically, the the, uh, the differences between walking football and standard six aside are there's no running, obviously. The sole of one foot has to remain on the floor at all times. Uh, and then apart from that, it's just normal sort of six aside rules. So you're not allowed to tackle from behind. Uh, the ball's got to re remain under crossbar height. Is it competitive? There are competitive leagues. We're not part of one yet, but... Um, we're looking to affiliate with the county FA sometime in the next couple of months and then put an application in to join a league. And obviously you, um, you're working closely with the guys who are playing. Could you kind of sum up what impact it's had on their lives getting involved in something like this? Well, obviously it gives guys who thought their playing career was over an, a chance to extend it. It's good for fitness, it's good for mental health, general well-being. Um, camaraderie you know a good social scene with the lads in the dressing room it's uh, there's not really that much to dislike about it really and i understand recently uh, just a couple of weeks ago you were it was announced by the newcastle united foundation that you were the be a game changer champion club how did all that come about we're one of the be a game changer champion clubs uh, it's just uh, an accolade that that uh, newcastle united foundation award the local clubs if they've done a lot to uh, promote awareness of men's mental health. One thing that we did make a little bit of history was we were the first walking football team to be recognised like that. I think lastly, if you were a, um, a female, wanted to get involved in this, is that something you would accept into this particular club or do you have any plans to have a women's walking football team? I would like to set up Last Legs Ladies, yes. We've actually got a female player coming to train with us tomorrow. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. But at the moment, uh, we don't have a ladies team. But like I say, I would like to set one up. And lastly, uh, obviously, we've got a, a big grudge match today against Sunderland. How do you think that's going to go? Well, obviously, Eddie, I don't want to give too much away about tactics or team selection at this stage. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a game that uh, we look forward to every year. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the added extra incentive to beat the Mackhams is, um, is something that the lads really want to get their teeth into. And I think, uh, you know, walking football is a non-contact game and it's played at a gentler pace. But today is a derby game and anything can happen. John, I understand you manage and run uh, Sunderland walking football. How, how did all that come about? Uh, Sunderland Walking Football Club has been going for about seven or eight years now. Um, we originally started off in uh, the Seaburn Centre in Sunderland 
uh, unfortunately that was uh, uh, earmarked for rebuilding so uh, that was demolished and we ended up at Goulds in Sunderland and we've been up there now uh, for probably about three or four years playing at Goulds. Membership of the club is upwards of 30 and we play twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12 till 1. Um, and just have a great time basically. Seems to be a common theme to be involved in something that's maybe bigger than yourself, something to look forward to, yeah. being with like-minded people in the crack in the band. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, absolutely, you know, and you meet up with people you haven't seen for years. You know, and you, you, meet, you meet up with people that you played against maybe, you know, 20, 30 years ago. You know, I met up with a friend of mine that I, I sat, ne sat next to at school we hadn't seen each other since we left school. Wow. You know, things like that and just, it's really good. Coming to today, you're playing Newcastle United. Yes. How do you feel about how this game's going to go? <laughs> I think it'll be a good competitive game. Again, you know, Dave was saying he's a Newcastle United season ticket holder, and you know, I'm a season ticket holder at Sunderland, and so quite a few of the other lads, you know. And so, yeah, there will be a bit of banter on the pitch, I'd imagine, and a bit of needle, maybe I don't know. But it's all, you know, it's all in a good cause. It's all, it's great fun, and that's what it's about. Yeah. Kev, I understand you've got an interesting story about how you've got into walking football. Oh, yeah, I was a bit of the Whitley Bay Ericsson. I was, uh, I was playing five-a-side uh, over the Christmas 2019. And uh, all of a sudden, I just I went over. Um, it was a heart attack, but it went with a sudden cardiac arrest straight away. So luckily, the lads I was with, um, they were the coaches, the new CPR and stuff, and the new swimming was wrong straight away. So uh, they started doing CPR as the keepers going, and then they had to go and get a, a defibrillator. Uh, so luckily, I was, I was shocked. And uh, by the time the paramedics came round, I was uh, I, I was starting to come round again after that. But was out for about ten minutes. Well, wow, so it literally saved your life. Literally saved my life. Yeah, there was no warnings. I had no pains beforehand. I was just I keep saying to the missus, I just hit the deck. You know, that's the joke when I go out. I was running and I just hit the floor, and that was it. I was I was away. Well, it's amazing. So, how did you um, get into walking football? Was it, was there a transition from that? Yeah. So I used to well, obviously I used to play at football even at all ages, like six or seven with, with friends and that. But um. So as part of the rehab after the, the cardiac arrest, they, they have you through a programme to get you walking every day and exercise. And I mean, I thought I was pretty fit in the first place, um, but it bores us, you know, they're running. I, I'm a, I like football, I coach with kids play. Um, and I'd heard about the, the place in Royal Keys where I'd had the, the heart attack and they had a walk in football in there. So I just went down as part of my fitness regime to, to, get it, to get it going again and not just walk in the streets type of thing. <laughs> so how much would you say has walking football changed your life? Oh, it's great because, I mean, as you get older, if you've been in football your life, you, you miss the crack with the lads and stuff. So with, with Last Legs, um, I was doing the rehab and I met Davey, uh, who runs it, and he said, oh, do you want to come down and train with us on a third, on a, a Monday at a walker? So I came down here and they have, you have a great crack with the lads. It's like, it's, it's good, you know, but he goes to tournaments around and, I mean, it's called a walking football. We'll get a bit of a jog on now and then if we can, you know, but it's... So it's just getting back in the banter and playing football and kicking around, it's great. Yeah, I mean, it helps your mental health, everything, you know, it's really good. Well, that's it, that's the end of the game. We finished Newcastle United, last legs five, Sunderland walking football three. And that was a lot closer than the scoreline suggests. That could have went either way, actually. But it was really competitive, a little bit of needle, but played in the right spirit. All of this to help promote and start talking about mental health. Get involved, get outside, do some exercise, join the gym, join something like this. It's all really good for you. And if you are struggling, don't forget to talk. Talk to your family, talk to your friends. Um, you can even contact the Newcastle United Foundation or text BAGG to 85258. There's always something out there. Newcastle United Foundation, they run workshops for mental health and all sorts of things you can get involved in. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Till next time, catch you later.